In the dark, hidden corridors of history, beneath the surface of what we thought we knew about Nazi Germany, lies a shrouded realm of diabolical innovations. From 1933 to 1945 during World War II, tales emerged, whispers of technology so advanced that they seemed out of place in their time. As Europe trembled under the relentless blitzkrieg, behind closed doors, the Third Reich conjured something even more terrifying. Amidst their war arsenal, one creation soared above the rest, a sinister harbinger of destruction that would leave an indelible mark on the world, the V2 rocket. But that's just the beginning. Welcome to Past Flicks. Prepare to be stunned as we expose Nazi Germany's diabolical secret technologies. In 1939, the very fabric of our world quivered, a resonant vibration of imminent conflict. Every nation's eye darted suspiciously, gauging alliances and scanning for threats. Yet hidden amidst this political maelstrom was a silent revolution led by none other than Nazi Germany. As nations prepared for war of ideologies, Germany envisioned a future dominated by raw, metallic might. Nazi Germany, where enthusiasm and fanaticism met unparalleled industrial strength, was incubating a war machine that would shock their vision, a landscape dominated by tanks those majestic iron beasts. While tanks weren't novelties of war, the Nazis saw them as more than mere tools. To them, these machines would be the harbingers of a new era. The early rumblings began with the Panzer I and Panzer II's unveiling. They might have seemed modest to the casual observer, but to the trained eye they were the precursor to an armored revolution. With these initial forays, Germany subtly hinted at a coming storm. Could these machines with their sleek designs and predatory firepower truly be the face of future warfare? Then, as the 1940s unfurled, those suspicions became a ground-shaking reality. Europe watched aghast as the Panzer III and Panzer IV roared to life, leaving scorched earth in their wake. They were the pulsing heart of the Blitzkrieg. Cities that once stood tall and proud were now at the mercy of these rampaging metal titans. Mere foot soldiers no longer defined the battlefield. It was the dominion of these heavy machines. Visionary tacticians like Heinz Guderian and Erich von Manstein were pulling the strings of this monumental shift. Guderian often whispered in military circles as the modern era's armored prophet envisioned tanks not just as muscle, but as the very backbone of an army. His audacious strategies were met with skepticism, only to be vindicated by the relentless success of the Panzers. But then the game changed. The Soviet T-34, a formidable beast, reared its head. Would Germany back down? Far from it. They unleashed the Panzer V, Panther, and the behemoth Panzer VI, Tiger, in response. The Panther, with its lethal grace, was a clear retort to its rivals, and the Tiger, boasting its monstrous 88mm gun, was a declaration of war. A challenge in steel and fire. However, even these awe-inspiring beasts weren't without their flaws. Their unmatched power came at a price, a logistical nightmare. As impressive as they were, their reputation became a two-edged sword. They were formidable on the battlefield, yet vulnerable to the intricacies that made them fierce. As the iron giants of Nazi Germany roared across the landscape, another revolution was stirring in the skies, casting an eerie shadow of futuristic warfare. The whispers among Allied air forces were growing more frantic as tales of a phantom aircraft, too fast to be real, began to spread. And at the heart of these aerial ghost stories was the German Air Force's secret weapon, the Messerschmitt Me 262, chillingly called the Swallow. Crafted in clandestine corners of Nazi aerodromes and brought to life by the genius of Dr. Willy Messerschmitt, this machine wasn't just an aircraft, it was a harbinger of a new era. While other planes of its time relied on propellers, the Swallow sang a different, more menacing tune with its jet engines. When it first soared through the skies on that fateful day of July 18, 1942, with Fritz Wendel at the helm, the very fabric of aviation was irrevocably altered. Imagine the shockwaves it sent. A beast unlike anything seen before, it ripped through the air at astonishing speeds of over 540 miles per hour. It wasn't just fast, it was a meteor. The Allied aircraft, which once ruled the skies, suddenly found themselves outpaced, outmatched, and staring into the face of obsolescence. However, this deadly swallow, while a masterstroke of design and engineering, wasn't without its vulnerabilities. 
As much as it was a symbol of Nazi Germany's relentless push for technological supremacy, it also became a representation of their growing desperation. Amidst fuel shortages and production challenges, the Swallow, despite its prowess, could not be replicated in numbers sufficient to turn the tide of war. As the skies above Europe echoed with the roar of jet engines and the terrifying swiftness of the Swallow, deeper in the dark depths of the Atlantic, another pulse of fear gripped the Allies. Once a symbol of exploration and discovery, the Atlantic had transformed into a deadly chessboard, and the German Navy was playing for keeps. At the center of this watery warfare was the U-boat, an innovation so secretive, so deadly, that it threatened to choke the lifelines of the Allies. These were not just submarines. They were phantom predators, using the cloaks of the ocean's depths to launch their surprise attacks. As convoys attempted to traverse the treacherous waters, the U-boats lie in wait, ready to unleash their torpedoes and send allied ships to their watery graves. At the helm of this oceanic onslaught stood some of the most fearsome names in naval warfare. Men like Carl Donitz, who spearheaded the ruthless U-boat strategy, pushing his submarine commanders to their limits in a relentless pursuit of allied prey. The sheer scale of this underwater warfare was staggering. From the early days of World War II until its very end, the U-boats wreaked havoc, with the peak of their reign of terror arriving between 1940 and 1942. During this period, dubbed the Happy Time by U-boat crews, they sank an estimated 2,825 Allied ships. The ocean floors became graveyards, and the waters of the Atlantic turned treacherous with the lurking menace below. Amidst the raging storm of war, where metallic beasts roamed the land and phantoms lurked beneath the ocean's depths, a different kind of battle was unfolding, one far removed from the deafening roars of tanks and submarines. This was the secret realm of Nazi encryption. While bullets and bombs left their tangible scars, a secret war of codes and ciphers raged silently, with ramifications as profound as any battle. At the heart of this cryptographic enigma stood a machine, a gadget so complex and bewildering it seemed to be pulled from the pages of science fiction, the Enigma Machine. First conceptualized in the 1920s and later adopted by the Nazis, this device was no mere typewriter. With its rotating disks and a labyrinth of wiring, the Enigma was engineered to cloak the Third Reich's darkest secrets in layers of cryptographic complexity. Its settings changed daily, rendering intercepted messages unreadable to prying Allied eyes. Such was its perceived impenetrability that many within the Nazi ranks believed their codes to be unbreakable, a myth they held onto until the bitter end. But there's a grain of truth behind every legend and a human touch behind every machine. Alan Turing and the Codebreakers of Bletchley Park. With their astute minds and tireless determination, these unsung heroes saw the Enigma not as an impervious fortress, but a puzzle, a challenge waiting to be unraveled. And so, in the utmost secrecy, they embarked on a quest to penetrate the Enigma's complex layers. The myths surrounding their endeavors are many. Tales of Turing's Bomba, a device developed to accelerate the decryption process, whispered rumors of intercepted messages predicting attacks, only to be ignored by higher-ups to protect the secret of the broken code, and stories of operatives playing double games, feeding misinformation to keep the Nazis in the dark about their compromised encryption. It's a chapter of World War II imbued with mystery, where shadowy figures danced a delicate ballet of deception. The battlefields were not of earth and sea, but of the mind, and the weapons were not guns and torpedoes, but intellect, intuition, and sheer ingenuity. Among all the secret codes and loud tank noises during the war, one invention stood out the most, the V-2 rocket. It changed how wars were fought and left a big mark in history. It was a weapon for the future, not the past. The late 1930s and early 1940s saw a vigorous race to master the skies, but Germany looked beyond, aiming for the very edge of the atmosphere. The ambition was audacious, to create a missile that could travel further and faster than any aircraft, delivering its deadly payload with unmatched precision. The V-2 rocket was not just a missile, it was the world's first true ballistic missile. Werner von Braun, who later became famous for space exploration, was the mastermind behind the V-2 rocket. Although he worked for the Nazis, he and his team at the Peenemünde Army Research Center were dedicated to creating a powerful weapon. 
They kept trying and improving, aiming to fulfill Hitler's dream of a weapon to fight back against the Allied bombings destroying German cities. By 1944, the V-2 rocket was fully developed. It could fly up to 180 miles high and then drop incredibly fast with a bomb inside. It could hit targets 200 miles away, which was groundbreaking at the time. Cities like London and Antwerp lived in fear of it. When people heard its sound, they knew danger was coming. There was no alert or siren, just an explosion when it landed. The myths and mysteries surrounding the V-2 are numerous. Tales of espionage as allies sought to uncover the secrets behind this weapon. Whispered stories about underground factories where rockets were produced in harsh conditions by forced laborers and legends of captured V-2s post-war, which sparked a space race between superpowers as they scrambled to harness the technology for themselves. But perhaps the most lasting legacy of the V-2 lies not in its wartime terror, but in the subsequent space exploration era. The same minds, particularly that of von Braun, would later pivot from creating weapons of destruction to crafting vehicles that would take humanity to the moon. This is Past Flicks, and we'll see you next time.